Hi everyone, Eric here, and welcome to the January 12th Investing Accelerator Coaching Call. So this week is pretty interesting because a couple of big things happened. The market has been recovering, and we're going to look at some of the stocks. So let's get started then. So let's talk about one of the holdings that I have, Electronic Arts. So previously, there was this downfall because A, Battlefield 5 wasn't doing too well. B, um, people are pretty against loot boxes. Now, this explains why the stock has been down. And then, if you have been following the weekly coaching calls, you will know that in the next two quarters, the next six months, it will be EA's busy season, and a couple of good titles are going to be launched. So, in the last week of December, you will see that EA actually rose from $75 to right now $90. So just in a couple of weeks, you'll see that all my positions are now positive and making money. And you'll also see that the Boilinger band is closing. So this will be what I think the first bottom is. So you can see that, you know, my entry point is not too far off from the bottom, even though I was a little bit early. So that is good. So now, once it's in a good shape, it's just a matter of continuing holding the stock. The next one, Dollar Tree. Now this is one of the uh, investment holdings entered by my student, John. So previously, you'll see that it formed a very solid W here. And you see that price has been hovering around this range ever since May, the end of May till the end of December. So that's pretty much um, seven months, maybe a little bit less than seven months, six months. So this bottom has been forming for a long time. Now, in one of my earlier coaching calls, when I analyzed this stock, I said, well, you better buy now because you see that management is releasing their earnings really soon. And um, they're release, uh, they have been acquiring a lot of stock options or they are receiving a lot of stock options. So this shows a positive sign, a very strong indication that management thinks the stock will go up. So guess what? In the last three weeks, the share price for Dollar Tree has been going up. Now, I think um, in order for this trade to make 100%, it needs to be somewhere close to 116 that's actually my guess. Uh, so at this point, you'll be really close to your break even. And it's just a matter of time, either in this wave, you reach this level, or you need to wait a little bit more because chances of it, you know, going straight up like this is still medium to low probability. But having said that, if you bought the longest option, you have two years, and this should be more than enough time to aim for a top near 110 to 116. Now, there is a possibility that Dollar Tree will exceed this point. So when you are near the exit point, you know, close to 100% or whatnot, you want to pay attention and you want to track it every day or every two days to find your ideal exit point. And just remember, there's no such thing as the highest high because you're in an uptrend. If you wait long enough, there's always going to be a higher high coming up. Okay. Activision. Now, Activision and EA here are two of the main blue chip video game studios uh, in the market for America. So we exclude Nintendo. So previously, I had the option to either invest in EA or invest in in Activision. Now these two are actually really close calls because personally I like Activision better because I actually play their games uh, when I was a kid but for EA they're more revolve around sports game which I don't actually play a lot. Having said that you'll notice that the drop for EA actually happened in July but for um, Activision it actually happened later in October. Now, what does this mean? It means for EA, you know, all the news has been out. Everyone knows about it. And that period is longer. So the chance of EA forming a bottom will be earlier than Activision. And that's actually very important. 
because the reason why Activision dropped is because of Diablo 3, a new game they're about to launch, which is mobile instead of desktop, and people are pretty angry about it. So, um, so that's, that's why I think Activision has not bottomed yet. It's still too early to tell. Now, during this week, um, they released a piece of news saying that one of the subsidiaries, Bungie, uh, has left Activision. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is an important piece of news because Bungie is the creator of Halos. And uh, Halo, no S. And the creator of Destiny, which is one of the more popular online shooting game um, nowadays. It's actually really popular. So losing Bungie, it's actually a loss for Activision. So now let's try to recap. They announced Diablo. You know, the gamers didn't like it because it was mobile, the drop, okay? Now they announced the separation between Activision and Bungie. Now the effect will not show up right away. Now the news we all know right away. And you see that within one day, it turned this small uptrend back into a downtrend. And you see this um, line here. So this means the bottom for Activision is going to be even lower. Now I don't know if it will go to 35, which is pretty cheap. But overall for Activision as a company, the financial performance is going to be worsened because Bungie has left. And Bungie is one of the, you know, top five gaming studios in the world. And they produce good games year after year, like Halo, like Destiny. So losing Bungie is actually, you know, have a very severe effect on Activision. So if you're looking to buy this stock, you want to wait for the next bottom. You don't want to be entering this bottom because it is still too early. Amazon, divorce with wife. So Jeff, if you have been paying attention to news, you'll notice that Jeff is going to have a divorce lawsuit or whatnot with his wife, and he's going to give her half his assets. Now, from what I researched, I don't think she'll get half of the shares of Amazon. Having said that, when CEO is involved in this kind of scandal, You might still want to wait. So you'll see that there's this downtrend in Amazon. And right now the stock price is here. Now, theoretically, the divorce should not have an impact on Amazon. Because it's, you know, it's Jeff's personal problem. But having said that, I would think the market would overreact. And this creates an opportunity to enter somewhere between the red and the blue area. So if you ever look to buy Amazon, you might want to wait a little. Having said that, when you do the financial statement analysis on Amazon, you might realize that it's not as good of a company as you think. Facebook. Now this is the last stock, and I've been tracking it quite a bit. I don't have Facebook, but one of my students does. Now for Facebook, it's kind of interesting because ever since this drop here, July is mainly due to privacy issue, the whole, you know, debate between the U.S. government and Facebook, whether they should have access to such data. And you'll realize that in terms of insider analysis, the COO, Cheryl, has been selling this company. Now, the good news is that only Cheryl has been selling it below $170. So, there's a rumor that Cheryl might be fired or whatever from Facebook because of all these issues. And Cheryl is just trying to liquidate her stock ASAP. So with that perspective in mind, and no one else is selling Facebook. And right now, we're seeing a W. Now, <clears throat> one of the concerning points of Facebook was actually the week of December 17th. You see this large black candle. It makes you think that, oh, okay, Facebook is going to continue to go down. But actually, there is support in this area. And you can see that this area that I am trying to draw a rectangle right now is one of the first bottoms 
or Facebook, okay? They might form a second bottom still, but if I start counting the weeks, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is the 8th week within this bottom. Now, the range for this bottom is kind of high. It's between 123 to 145. So if you can enter somewhere between here or the mid-range, you should be pretty covered because you're in this blue area. And I don't think Facebook is going to turn into a downtrend yet. Also, you can see that the Bollinger Band is no longer going down and it's kind of starting to become flat. So this bottom formed for Facebook is important. So what are the possibilities now? Either if Facebook is strong enough, which historically it is, once it forms this bottom, it will just go up like this. Okay, that is the first scenario. The second scenario is that once Facebook forms this bottom, it goes up here, it touches this 172 mark because this is the upper part of the Berliner band and the market will be a little bit exhausted to push through all the way from 140 to 200 in one go. So what happens is it will go up to around 170, 164 range, wherever this upper part of the Berliner band is. And it might come back to this support area between the red and the blue. And then it will go up again. So it will do a big W. So if you can't see what I just did, this is what I think will happen. So here, you see it's down here, right? And the next reasonable support area or resistance area will be somewhere in this range. You can't be exact, but this is one of the scenarios. Now, afterwards, because there's proven demand and support in this area, the chance of Facebook going back down and going lower is actually very low. So it will actually be somewhere ending up at around 145 here. This is my guess. Whoops. And then it might take a little bit more time, but it will do this. So this is the W I foresee for Facebook. So if you're tracking Facebook and you don't know what is going to happen, I think this is the most likely scenario. The scenario in which if I move this line here and Facebook just shoots up to 200 and beyond in one go, that is very rare. So that's why you want to be conservative and you want to give yourself extra room when you're investing in Facebook. And just take some time because look, even if I draw this chart right now, okay, and it's hard to notice, but I'm actually trying to mimic the degree in which, or the acceleration, or the speed in which this price is dropping to here. Okay? So that means I'm expecting in February or March, Facebook will near 167. It'll come back down near May or whatnot. Now these time that I'm giving you are not exact, but it gives you a reference point. It gives you something to think about. Now, this is a very, you know, typical slash reasonable situation. So that means if I want to exit Facebook at $200, I'm looking at the September of 2019. So this is one, like the end of the year, basically. So if I have any delay, because usually when you form a bottom, you have a few more months. So if I have any delay like this, let's say I give it a couple more, more weeks here to create a buffer. Okay, then I'm looking somewhere in October, I would even be more conservative, December of 2019. So this is what I think will happen in terms of time frame and how the price um, will hover. Now it might take more time or it might take less time, but it's always better to give yourself more time so then you're less stressful, you're more relaxed, and you're more laid back. Okay? So, that is it for this week's coaching call, and I'll see you next week.